Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm going to use um, a PyCon SciPy board. Uh, so um, the SciPy is actually a board made by our our partner, which is actually using MicroPython. So it's very easy to uh, to do some uh, quick uh, quick prototyping. So I'm using Atom to to connect to my uh, to my board. Uh, I'm just doing this to retrieve uh, typically the ID of my device uh, and also to send messages. So here I've got the ID of my device, which is 4D37DD. And so I am going to run the SNE, Sigfox Network Emulator. Okay, so once you have plugged the USB uh, SD admin goal, you can run the Sigfox Network Emulator, and then you will arrive on this uh, on this web page. So it's like running a local uh, local web server. Uh, the first thing that you will need to do is to configure the radio radio zone. So as we have already said, we've got different radio configuration with different frequencies on the Sigfox network. Uh, so as you can see, we've got uh, different radio zone. Radio zone one is for Europe, uh, two is for US, Mexico, Brazil. Radio zone three is Japan. Uh, radio zone four is uh, mostly Latin America and Asia. Uh, five is Korea and six is uh, soon to be, uh, to be live country. So here I'm using RC1. Then I go on the devices menu on the left, and from here you can put the IDs of the devices that you want to, to use. Uh, so here I have already registered my SciPy board with the 4037DD ID, so all is good. Uh, you can also configure callbacks. As we have said, it's like, uh, uh, it's limited number of features compared to the real Sigfox backend, but you can from here uh, create new callbacks uh, if you want to test a downlink from here, you can also create either callback downlink or direct direct mode downlink, uh, and then enter all the callback information. And depending on your network, uh, IT network, you may need to configure proxy as well. So here you've got also a possibility to add to add a proxy. So. Configuration is quite quite simple. If you have already used a Sigfox backend, uh, there will be nothing new here in the configuration. The next section, the next section here is the messages. So if I click on messages, for now I don't have any messages yet because I haven't sent uh, any at the moment. And last option that you can see on the screen is authentication. So as as you may know, on the in the when you are using Sigfox, we we have authentication and integrity protection. So uh, we are using AES-128 uh, encryption mechanism, so security keys, to authenticate and do integrated check of uh, messages. So when you are using authentication, uh, authentication enabled, uh, you need to actually move your device to what we call uh, AES public key. So uh, on each Sigfox device, most of Sigfox device actually, you've got possibility to switch to like the Sigfox uh, global uh, AES key. And so by doing that, you will be able to get your messages authenticated by the Sigfox SDR bungle. If for some reason you don't have any, uh, you, don't, you, you cannot switch to this public key, then you can just disable authentication and messages will be received, but we won't be able to authenticate them. And one, uh, one of the consequences if you disable authentication is that you won't be able to, to test downlink messages because your device will reject basically the, the messages because it's not uh, integrated check will be, uh, will be failed. So in our case, we're gonna just use authentication and I'm going to go back to my Atom ID. 
So here I just got this simple Sigfox Hello World uh, that is used to configure basically like Sigfox mode. Uh, so I'm using RCZ1. Uh, here I'm creating a socket, I'm printing ID and pack information. And here, just at the end, I'm sending like a couple of bytes uh, over the network. And here, so for instance, when you use the PyCom board, you've got a specific function, which is a public key. And so when you set it to true, it, uh, it sets, it set uh, some messages to use the public key. So we are going to run this program. So as you may see here, it's running. Okay, I may not be connected to the good port. Let me check quickly. Con 28. Settings, Con 28, that's correct. Okay, let's connect. Okay, let's run. Okay, so here it displays IDN pack um, as provided here in the program, and then it's sending a message. And so see, as I come back now on the interface, I've got my device ID 4037DD displayed uh, with a sequence number and with the data that I have just sent. So like if, I, if we look at what I have received and what I have sent here, I can retrieve the different bytes. So, as you can see, it's quite easy to get started with, uh, with the SDR. Uh, as I have said here, I'm using authentication enabled. I could also disable it now because uh, even if I use a public key, if you disable it, basically you will be able to receive messages uh, for, from your device. But as I said, authentication is required if you want to test the downlink. So I have another example program here with the downlink enabled, which is basically doing the same thing. It, the difference is that it's just sending one byte and then it is printing the output of um, what the SDR dongle is sending in downlink. So if I go back to my configuration, I go to callbacks. Here I have just created a simple callback for my devices. So if I click on edit, you can see here that for the downlink configuration, I'm using direct mode. So I am not using a callback uh, for this one, but for instance, if you have an application server and you want to do full end-to-end -end testing, then you will need to select callback and then put the uh, HTTP URL of your web server here. But we are, here we are using the direct mode and basically what we are sending in downlink is uh, a timestamp and the ID of the base station that received uh, the message. Okay, so let's go back to the Atom Editor. So I will just reset my device, select the Sigfox downlink, and click on Run. Okay, so it's displaying my device ID again. If I go back to my interface, I have received a new message uh, with a new sequence number and with the payload 0F. So as you can see here, the uplink callback uh, worked. Here, the downlink one is pending. Uh, as, as you may know, with the Sigfox up, uplink and downlink, basically when you do downlink, uh, the Sigfox device sends an uplink message with a flag saying that I'm expecting a downlink message. And 20 seconds later, uh, I mean 20 seconds to 40 seconds later, the downlink message will be sent back by the base station to the device. 
So here you see that the downlink message has been sent to, uh, to the device and the device replied with an out-of-band message to acknowledge the downlink message. Uh, and in this out-of-band message, the device is sending basically uh, just simple uh, voltage information and the RSSI of the downlink message. So here RSSI is pretty high because I'm, of course I'm connected directly between the device and the SDR dongle. If I go back to my Atom editor, so as you can see here, I've got device ID and here's the downlink response. Here, which is corresponding to, to the timestamp and then the ID of the base station. But as here, we are using SDR dongle, there is no real base station ID associated to, to the device. So as you can see, it's quite easy to, to use the Sigfox network emulator. Uh, the features are very similar to what you can have from, uh, from the Sigfox backend. As I have mentioned before, one other reason to use the SDR bungle is because of the radio, radio signal analyzer. So radio signal analyzer is, as, as we said, it's useful when you do Sigfox verified certification. So here I am using uh, an already certified uh, device, uh, but it's, we can still use the Sigfox radio signal analyzer to look at it. So here, my radio signal analyzer is actually uh, using, uh, I'm using actually like a virtual image uh, just for the sake of the demonstration, but uh, to, to be sure that you, I mean, to get a stable software, it is better to actually use a USB stick. So you download the virtual, you download the image from the build website, and then you copy it on the USB stick and you boot directly from the USB. Uh, because if you are using a virtual image, so like I'm doing right now, you may have some stability uh, stability issue during the testing. So we uh, um, we always ask people to use directly a USB uh, USB stick. Uh, but once you have started it, you can click on Radio Signal Analyzer. You accept. And here I am just enabling basically the USB uh, driver for my virtual image, but uh, it, it won't be required if you are using directly the USB stick. So once you do that, here on the left side, uh, you can basically do first the device configuration. So if you want to be able to, to look at the decoding of the data, you need to provide the ID of your device. Uh, of course, like if you just want to, to look at the content of the data, uh, the Sigfox network emulator that we were just looking at before, is uh, it's much easier basically to, uh, to start with. And you can also choose between public key or the private key, uh, if you have access to it, you can also put directly here the private key. And then you select the radio configuration that you want to use. Okay. Then here you've got different test modes. So basically the test mode that you can, uh, you can see here, uh, you can retrieve, you can get information of the details of what it means if, uh, if you are going through the Sigfox uh, verified certification. So for instance, if you go through Sigfox Certified Verification, if you go on the resources.sigfox.com, uh, here you can access lots of documentation if, if you don't know about this, uh, this website. Uh, and so from here, you can look for Sigfox Verified. And for instance, I will look for Sigfox Verified uh, Radio Configuration 1. I look at the specification. Here, you can download the document. And from here, you will get basically all the details of what you need to do to go through the Sigfox uh, verified certification. So here you will get a lot of information to understand what it means here in the radio signal analyzer when, I, when you select the different test mode. Okay, uh, the last thing to configure is here the tester, but here we are using a SDR dongle, so it's easy. Uh, you can also do some RF setup, but if you are just using 
uh, the attenuator and the RF cable provided in the kit. You just keep the same, uh, the default value here and it will be, uh, it will be good. So then you open the USB interface and then you can start the tester. So as you can see here, I am displaying uh, the spectrum of the signal on the device. And so if I send a message, you will see that we will see the peaks on the, on the spectrum. So let me try to split the window. Uh, I will just use the Sigfox Hello World. Okay, here we're good. And I will run. So here you can see some peaks. It's probably just some leaks from devices around uh, around me. Okay, let's run. So you see here, I've got one peak on the right, another peak here, and another peak here as well. So it's quite interesting to uh, to use the tool. Uh, so as I said, it's useful when you do Sigfox verify certification. Uh, but if you are also curious to know more about uh, how Sigfox works in general, uh, you can of course just download the image and start playing with it and see how it looks looks like on the spectrum. Uh, you've got also different uh, measurements available. So as I said, when you go through Sigfox verify certification, you need to uh, you need to comply with our certification. So for instance, here you've got information uh, regarding the, the spectrum. So you've got uh, the narrowband spectrum, the intermediate and the full one. Uh, you've got also information regarding the data rate. So as you know, like when you are using radio configuration one, uh, the data rate is 100 bit per second. Uh, and so basically uh, you need to stay, the device needs to stay between 99 and 101 bit per seconds in order to be Sigfox verified. Uh, so you've got all the uh, Sigfox verified uh, items that you can access from here. You can also look at the frequency distribution uh, when you are doing the testing. So all, all the details regarding radio signal analyzer, uh, as I said, you can find all the details for, the, for that in the Sigfox verified documentation. So uh, you can go directly on the resources.sigfox.com to, uh, to get access to them.